Hi Virgo, what is coming in for you? And I have one question for you as well. So every time I do your reading, I normally ask you a question. Sometimes you tell me what I can watch on TV and you come up with some really good suggestions for that. But I want to ask you, and it's a very simple question, are you tidy? That's what all the astrology books say about you. Virgo, tidy, spreadsheets, organized. I want to know. Let me know, are you tidy? Are you an August Virgo? Are you a September Virgo? Because that might make a difference. But are you tidy? Let me know, I want an insight. Anyway, we're gonna pull some cards on your love life, on your work life, on your career. Oof. And they've all kind of come out as one block. So let's just do it that way then. We've got five cards just straight off the bat. Gosh. Okay, Page of Swords. Some of you are going to be having a conversation. There's going to be some kind of communication. Because it's the page, it's not, you know, belt and braces, the full enchilada. It's the beginning of something. So pages are the most junior. So think of it in terms of somebody awakening and thinking I really need to say that to this person. I really need to hear this and I really need to say that. It's like communication and it will become clearer I think as we take more cards but I feel like for some of you that you're in a bit of a quandary, a sort of this or that situation. The next card you get to go with it though is the Ten of Cups, which I really, 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 really like. This is a resolution, it's happiness, it's Mars in Pisces, it's a 10. So you've, and I've got two 10s here for you as well, which is very interesting because the other 10 I get is the Ten of Swords. Now, if you watch me a lot and do subscribe if you haven't already and then you can get my dailies. Um, if I pull, I often pull two tens together. It's just one of those things. All readers have their own idiosyncrasies. That is mine. There's something here about a situation coming to a head, coming to a fruition, something which is working itself out, but you are also helping it to be worked out. For some of you, it could be something as big as like a legal situation or a divorce or something where you have to sort of back and forth quite a bit in order to be able to come to a resolution, to be able to say what you need to say. For some of you, this could be a relationship that is in flux, it's in free fall or it's in kind of a bit like this much of a line. It feels quite tricky. We have the Nine of Swords as well, which is a card of worry of, I mean, I know that Virgos do worry. That is something I do know for sure, because I have a lot of Virgo friends. They're not all tidy, but they do all worry. And I think it's because as a Virgo, you have that sort of mercurial ability to be able to imagine what will happen if this doesn't happen, to come up with scenarios. Now, of course, that can quite easily tip over into sort of doom scrolling in your own head. In the middle of all these cards, we've got the chariot, which is two horses headed in different directions. Again, this is the crux of the matter. You could go either way with this and you can feel that. For some of you, this may be in your working life. I've had this come up for a few signs this month where you might quite like to leave a situation or a scenario. There is a horse making a bid for freedom here, but at the same time, you might quite like to stay, but for different reasons. This can be as kind of normal as I don't really like this job, but I do like the money or I need the money. I need to pay my bills. Um, my rent has gone up or whatever. We're living in some interesting times at the moment. You don't always get to choose your moment. 
I would say for those of you where you're feeling it but you can't act on it, just drop a pin in a month or two's time, okay? Because things change. This is quite a volatile looking reading, but that's good in lots of ways. Because being stuck in something, while it's a comforting energy, and that is a being stuck energy, whether it's a relationship or whether it's your work life, being stuck is reliable. You know what you don't like. You know this is going to happen every day. You know um, you have a sort of thread in your head going over and over and over about how you want to leave, but you can't leave. You know, it's, it's sort of a routine. And it's a routine that you can get sort of addicted to in a really weird way. And you want change at the same time, but you're also addicted to this routine. I know I can't really explain it, but we're humans. I sort of can explain it. We're humans. Our brain tries to protect us from making errors and mistakes. Unknown geography, unknown futures are difficult for our brain to handle because we want sort of guarantees. And those guarantees, of course, aren't available, but you can guarantee if you do nothing, things will stay the same. And sometimes that's a comfort. And that I'll show you the cards where they're at at the moment with my side arm. I mean, that's going to really bother any of you that are tidy. I'm a Pisces, by the way. I'm your opposite sign. Okay. You can see these cards are all quite action-led. You know, the stuff happening here. And it's sort of swords and hearts and glitter and unicorn and gore and horses and the whole bit which for a Virgo is quite unusual. So, something traps you here, but when you get the tens, tens are a breakthrough. So you're breaking through the trap, but you're also gonna need quite a lot of courage, I think, to be able to break out and make your mark and to be able to express who you really are, what's really going on with you. who you want to be, where you want to be, what you want to do, the whole bit. Let's take a couple more cards for like life purpose and channeled messages. There will be an extended reading as there is every single month and the extended reading takes the love cards that we'll do along here and we expand on those. We use different decks, different oracle cards and we ask how do they feel about you? What does that really mean? What came up in this reading? We dig even further. Ooh, that's nice. So if you get to the end and it resonates, it's the first link in the description box. Okay, much steadier energy here. Oh God almighty. <laughs> just got the tower. I just went much steadier energy here as my hand unbeknown to me was on the tower. Okay, good. I'm, I welcome this. Anyhow, you're like, do you, Gemma? Thank you very much. Something's got you stuck. You want to get unstuck. You need to get unstuck. Even if getting unstuck means that you go into a very unknown future. You've got the Ten of Swords. It becomes too painful to stay the same. This may, we haven't done your love cards yet, but when we do them in a minute, this may relate as well to your love life. We will see, see what cards you get for that. You are chipping your way out. There is no fast track here. If it was a fast track, it's a bit like a get rich quick scheme. It's usually not true. I'm not saying that they're all not true, but the majority, you know, probably not. Hi. So, you're chipping away. Know that you are doing what Virgos often do, which is chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, showing up, doing the work. Things, let's say you're this person here, you know, chip, 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 chip like that. All very good. Got your whatever that thing's called and your hammer thing. And then all of a sudden you hit one bit and the whole lot comes down. 
It may happen sooner than you think. We have success with the six of wands, winner, winner, chicken dinner or vegan alternative. And then we have the tower. I know. Get a load of that bad boy. Just as we thought it was safe to sneak back into the nine to five or the toxic relationship or whatever it is that has you kind of shut off the tower's going to do something. This could be an argument. It could be something that just comes in left field and happens. It's basically someone lifting the lid. This month has come up for everyone as someone lifting the lid. As a Virgo, you might want that lid to stay back on. And I have to say, even though I'm your opposite sign of Pisces, we kind of share a few traits as opposite signs do. I usually like to keep the lid on too. But there are times when that bad boy has got a blow, as the actress said to the bishop. Right, let's have some love cards. So I think what I'm trying to say here with your life purpose and your career is that it doesn't make a difference if you cling to the window ledge. You're still gonna fall, but you could land somewhere quite nice, but it's a bit scary. Love life. Gosh, I've got two cards here that seem a bit awkward. Okay. And no wonder. Gosh, I'm gonna take one more. Nope, just those for now. Okay, let's just zoom out a little bit. Okay, God knows what's down the side of there. Oh, oh it's just my chair. Cool, okay. Right, we start off Love Life with the Five of Wands. Five of Wands is a card of miscommunication it's not a big deal, the Five of Wands. It's more the little things. You know, the, it can be little arguments, can be pettiness, can be bickering, can be, you know, that you're like this, that you just misunderstand each other for a while. You have this feeling <coughs> that you're not seeing eye to eye on something. It's not big, but it does double into another 10. And when you get a five and a 10 next to each other, that energy doubles, obviously, five to the 10, and it maxes out. And look, you've got three tens now. The only 10 you don't have is the 10 of pentacles, and that might come up in the extended or in a minute. Okay. This is you, again, where that five builds and builds and builds. There's some pressure building here about not communicating with each other or game playing. Because look, here with the Five of Swords, this is Venus in Aquarius. It's people who are wandering around the battlefield. They haven't fought, but they're still collecting the spoils. I see this card in relationships as being the sort of, um, what's the word? It's like a chess game where two people are maneuvering around each other and someone needs to blink. It's a little bit like, instead of the cauldron pot or the whatever, instead of it bubbling up, it's kind of just simmering, but the lid is still on. And again, it's gonna need somebody to take that lid off, to raise that lid. Will that somebody be you? Six of Pentacles. I mean, that is a really nice card to get. You may find that the person that you have in mind, the person that you're dealing with, or just your love life in general, benefits from someone initiating something, someone paying it forward. The Six of Pentacles is the energy of kindness, and we also get the Four of Swords, which is peace. So you're making peace with something. 
you're making peace with something that oop, hang on okay god got some really interesting energy here let me just take me away so you can see it so some generosity coming into you from someone else someone else initiating paying it forward could even be apologizing or trying to clear clear the air trying to make an effort trying to come to you to give this relationship some energy that it is much needed i think or some oxygen okay it's like someone comes and puts the oxygen mask on the relationship we then have the four of swords which is finding peace so that you're not kind of up on your own grill there questioning yourself wondering second guessing analyzing all of those very cerebral things that virgo minds will do so it's getting settled it's feeling calm or calmer reaching a point of sort of i'm getting channeled you know when the sea is really really calm and you're just on a boat and it's just really nice and there's no waves and you're just drifting and you don't know where you're going but it's really nice not too deep not too shallow you know no sharks conditions are just right so you find some equilibrium through this and you find some peace we have the seven of what so that seven of cups here though as well and the seven of cups is the challenge of fantasy land so this is where you can be tempted to drift even further and to imagine that you are somewhere that you're not yet okay it's very important in your relationship or in your love life from whatever stage it's at for you to be able to differentiate fact from fiction or words from actions okay we then have the ace of wands which is great because this is new energy new passion new fire coming in and it's an ace so it's the beginning of something which is really really nice and also i do like that we have that tower as well in your reading it's almost like a reset or someone throwing petrol onto the fire which then makes it happen and then you get the two of cups come on virgo get on notice this love card is kind of at the end of quite a lot of stress and sort of work and graft this does not come to you easily it almost might be a, a case of it's worth fighting for it does feel like a bit of a battle in the next few weeks it feels like your life is quite kind of there's quite a lot of swords there's quite a lot of wands there's quite a lot of action and battle and scrapping it out but i do like where you end up if you do that okay in the extended reading i am going to start with that two of cups i am going to use love oracle cards and tarot cards in order to see where's that going that looks like a springboard Ooh, hello that's interesting that's difficult for a virgo i think as well divine timing trust in divine timing love arrives when it's meant to or you know it does actually say here at 10 past 10 if we're going to be specific when you get divine timing it does always feel difficult because it is but also good at the same time and that is what your reading is difficult and good at the same time okay 
I'm going to go do the extended reading. If you want to join me there, it is the first link in the description box below. I'm looking forward to it, Virgo. Let's see where this Two of Cups wants to go next. Leave me a comment. Tell me if you're tidy and I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.